And just to recap, to make sure that you've really gotten it, Eric Prince, two pair of vent guards were riding on the back of an army vehicle, and guess what happened? They hit a bump, the, 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 the AK-47 that they, again, had stolen from the bunker, discharged from one pair of vent guards, and shooting another contractor in the head, paralyzing him. Private military contractors, these people, bless. Because you can't be tried in the country where you commit your crimes in, thanks to the State Department. This, like, this securities brand, which actually seems like a war crime incorporated at this point, because look at this. Prince, he was like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna back off from American defense industry. He takes his, and he uploads his entire family's life, moves them to Abu Dhabi, gets real close with the Prince of Abu Dhabi, went and tried to gather up shell casings in order to protect Blackwater. 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 America, not only as a country, but as an institution of white supremacy, was built off of the back of the evil deeds perpetuated by its forefathers. It's no stranger to war. Domestically, the United States has had a dark history of systemic racism and oppression. The genocide of indigenous peoples, the enslavement of Africans, and the continued disenfranchisement of poor people are just some of the many ways in which this country has harmed its citizens. These issues continue to haunt this country to this day, with hatred and discrimination still prevalent in many aspects of society. Abroad, the U.S. hasn't fared much better. The United States has had a long history of interventionist foreign policies and military diplomacy. From the destabilization of foreign governments, enabling American corporations' atrocities, and the excessive use of unmanned drone bombing attacks, the United States has often acted within its own self-interest at the expense of others. These actions have caused immense suffering to countless individuals and communities across the world, directly facilitated by our American military. Frankly, this country spends way too much on the military. Within the top 10 countries for military spending, the United States spends more than the next nine countries combined. Furthermore, this excess military spending comes at the cost of essential social services and programs. Rather than investing in healthcare, education, housing, childcare, immigration, cleaner renewable energy, historically underserved communities, infrastructure, social work, the post office, child poverty, and eliminating child hunger, the United States continues to pour unfathomable amounts of money into a never ending war machine. But with this $800 billion a year that we're spending on the military, despite currently being involved in exactly zero wars, one must wonder where all this money is going. The answer is military contractors, namely R&D for New Delhi technologies, but we will be focusing on a different aspect of military contracting today. One of the most insidious aspects of American foreign policy is the military industrial complex, specifically the use of private military companies. These companies, often operating with little oversight and no accountability, have been involved in numerous human rights abuses and war crimes across the globe. Now, the involvement of the United States in foreign conflicts is already a dubious endeavor. There have been numerous debates over just how much responsibility the U.S. holds in spreading democracy around the globe. And if that is the responsibility that the U.S. holds, which I believe that it is not, where does that responsibility end and the sovereignty of these autonomous foreign powers begin? But Despite all of that, there is one party that, as the saying goes, plays both sides and comes out on top. Doing what private American corporations do best. Just like Nestle profiting directly off of slave labor, Pfizer limiting vaccine access to developing nations, and don't even get me started on Chiquita, American corporations have a history of extracting profits off of the suffering of the global south, and private military contractors are the worst defenders. So strap in, for this is a story of corruption, war crimes, and billions of dollars on the line. Join me as we go into the Blackwater, a story of money, morality, and military contracts. Let me introduce you to Blackwater. Blackwater was a private military contractor slash army that was founded by Eric Prince in 1996. Prince is a former Navy SEAL and son of Edgar Prince, a billionaire industrialist who founded Prince Corporation. After commissioning into the Navy in 1992, he left the service only a few years later, stating that there was a need for private training facilities for special operations. In 1997, he moved to Virginia Beach and using what I assumed to be his inheritance, bought 6,000 acres of land in a great dismal swamp in North Carolina. Here, he decided to set up a school for training special operations. This would later become known as Blackwater Worldwide, aptly titled after the bogs the school was located in. In a hearing about the war crimes that Blackwater committed, which we will talk about later, Former U.S. Representative Henry A. Waxman had this to say about Eric Prince. In 1997, he saw an opportunity to start his own company and created Blackwater. We are trying to do for the national security apparatus what FedEx did for the Postal Service, by which he means divert all government funding for the government service to the private sector. 
Did you know that USPS received a budget of $263 million in 2022, while FedEx received $1.1 billion in government contracts in that same time? Just an interesting factoid. Blackwater began getting multi-million dollar contracts in 2003, first starting as PSDs, or Personnel Security Detachment Contracts, where they would provide security for high-profile government officials. This would grow and the contracts would continue to increase until 2005, where they were hired by the Department of Homeland Security to help during Hurricane Katrina. Notice the help in quotations. While that might sound good, it cost the government a quarter of a million dollars per day for Blackwater's presence in the disaster zone. And if you think that they were providing relief, then you would be sorely mistaken. They were hired to protect government facilities as well as by private clients, including communications, petrochemical, and insurance companies not to help with the relief effort. From 2001 to 2010, Blackwater was awarded upwards of $600 million from the CIA for classified contracts as well. Blackwater has been involved in the Iraq war since its PSD, uh, jeez, jeez. Blackwater has been involved in the Iraq war since its PS, Blackwater has been involved in the Iraq war since its PSD days in 2003. I'm reading it off the screen. I don't know what's happening. The screen is right there. I can read off of the screen. I don't know what I'm doing. Blackwater has been involved in the Iraq war since its PSD days in 2003 and 2004. Its first contract was for 201, Blackwater has been involved in the Iraq war since its PSD days in 2003 and 2004. Its first contract was for $21 million for a PSD and two helicopters to protect Paul Bremer, head of US occupation in Iraq at the time. This presence would only increase as in 2006, Blackwater was awarded a contract to protect US diplomats in the US embassy in Iraq for $488 million. Working alongside Dan Corp and Triple Canopy, two other private contractors also working in Iraq. But from 2005 to 2007, Blackwater was involved in 195 shooting incidences, shooting first in 193 of those cases. However, this is nothing compared to the Nisor Square Massacre. On most days, the view from Omar Wesso's rooftop is of this rather unspectacular intersection in western Baghdad. But on September 16th, Mr. Wesso saw the extraordinary. A barrage of bullets sprayed Nisur Square, killing 17 Iraqis. Mm. Mr. Wesso is one of dozens of Iraqis interviewed by the New York Times who witnessed the now famous Blackwater incident and have reconstructed it in similar detail. Mr. Wesso's account is startling because he is staunchly pro-American and a member of the Patriotic Union of Kurdistan Party. All of the witnesses interviewed say the bullets were fired by guards working for Blackwater USA, a private security company working in Iraq. The long and short of it is, is that after a car bomb exploded near where U.S. and Iraqi officials were meeting on September 16, 2007, a 19-man Blackwater tactical team was dispatched and took a position on the south side of the square. At some point, the team began firing upon civilians in response to an approaching car, according to the team. Blackwater ended up killing 17 people, 14 civilians, and wounding 20 more. This was taken to a criminal trial in 2014, where defense lawyers for Blackwater members argued that the approaching Kia was a credible possibility as a car bomb and that opening fire was in self-defense. The prosecutors held that the men did not face any hostile gunfire when they began shooting and continued to shoot despite the lack of hostile threats. The driver of the Kia was shot once in the head by a Blackwater contractor and was killed. The Kia continued to roll forward after the driver was killed and the team continued to fire upon it, killing the passenger, the driver's mother, and a dozen other civilians, including civilians who were trying to drive away from the shooting. Eventually, the Kia was struck by a grenade and was incinerated. The grenade was shot by Blackwater, of course. On September 27, 2007, the New York Times even reported that a member of the Blackwater security team continued to fire upon civilians despite urgent ceasefire calls from his colleagues. That alleged incident was only resolved due to another Blackwater contractor pointing his weapon at the man still firing and ordering him to stop. Immediately following the massacre, the Iraqi government revoked Blackwater's right to conduct work in Iraq, and the investigations were performed by them, the U.S. State Department, and the FBI. But make no mistake, the State Department was not operating in good faith. 
you know, as they're usually known to do. As the New York Times also wrote, the case against Blackwater guards faced a number of hurdles, many of them the government's own making. From the outset, there were indications that State Department officials tried to gather shell casings after the shooting in an effort to protect Blackwater. The State Department also gave contractors limited immunity after the shooting, which made it significantly harder for the Justice Department to build its case. And the limited immunity is also interesting as it was an order given by Paul Bremer himself, somebody who has been closely involved with Blackwater and other security contractors. Its first contract was for $21 million for a PSD and two helicopters to protect Paul Bremer, head of US occupation in Iraq at the time. It really did feel like the US government was caping for the Blackwater guards that had just mercilessly murdered over a dozen civilians. A judge even threw out all the charges in 2009, citing reckless government behavior, which also didn't really make any sense seeing how the reckless government behavior was on the side of the guards. So throwing out the charges only benefited those who was doing the reckless behavior. It's all very dumb and corrupt, but the charges were later reinstated. As a result of the massacre, four Blackwater guards were tried and convicted of a number of crimes, including but not limited to first degree murder, voluntary and attempted manslaughter charges. This whole endeavor was so bad and public and bad that even in this warmongering era of post 9-11 politics, the public opinion was against Blackwater. Surprise. So Blackwater only had one choice. It had to rebrand. Now Blackwater had already changed its name from Blackwater USA to Blackwater Worldwide in October 2007, coincidentally the month after the shooting. And after stating that on July 21st, 2008, Blackwater Worldwide would shift its resources away from security contracting, Blackwater rebranded again. Enter Z Services. Blackwater rebranded again to Z Services in February 2009. As a part of this restructuring plan, Prince resigned as CEO, but he maintained his position as chairman of the board. Now, if Z Services is to be believed, they had completely separated themselves from the Blackwater brand. Totally new website, totally new management, new company, basically. However, even though, spoiler alert, Z Services only existed for officially for a single year, they made sure to establish a foothold in the defense industry. I will be using Z and Blackwater interchangeably here as functionally there is no difference between the two. Now, 2009 operated as a turning point for the Blackwater brand. As we saw with Blackwater proper, shedding its snake skin and turning into what we call Z Services, all of Blackwater's subsidiaries did the exact same thing. It's actually a very interesting concept. Blackwater taking its subsidiaries from all the different industries that it had its hands in, rebranding them, separating them from the Blackwater brand and subsequently selling those companies off to other large corporations as well to profit. Aviation. Aside from Z Services itself is Blackwater Airships LLC. Blackwater Airships LLC was established in January 2006 as a division of Blackwater Security Company. They began developing a non-rigid airship known as the Polar 400. This airship is designed to perform a variety of aerial surveillance and security missions for the U.S. government, such as patrolling U.S. borders and coastal waters, and performing persistent surveillance missions in conflict zones. Z rebranded this company with the name Guardian Flight Systems. In a presentation Guardian Flight Systems gave, they labeled themselves as a division of Aviation Worldwide Services. This is true, but as with the nature of shell and front companies, does not state the fact that Aviation Worldwide Services is owned by Blackwater. Aviation's Worldwide Services is not the only aviation service Blackwater owns. They also own Presidential Airways, an air charter and special cargo transportation service. Presidential Airways also owns and operates a passenger airline based in Melbourne International Airport. Just like its parent company, however, Aviation Worldwide Services and Presidential Airways, along with STI Aviation and AirQuest Incorporated, both also being owned by Blackwater as well, have been involved in some controversy. In October 2005, the Washington Post reported that AWS is a defendant in a wrongful death suit in the U.S. District Court in Florida, brought by the families of three soldiers killed when the company's Blackwater 63 plane crashed in Afghanistan. The suit alleged negligence and was settled for an undisclosed amount. Blackwater Target Systems LLC Blackwater Target Systems designs, manufactures, and installs firearm target systems to include paper turners, Brunel 500 steel targetry, and other range solutions. The company transitions into GDS manufacturing. Now, as for what happened to this front, I have no idea. I just know that they have existed. Blackwater Lodge and Training Center Blackwater Lodge and Training Center is one of the few physical locations that you could actually visit for Blackwater. It's located in Moyoc, Moyoc, Moyoc. It is located in Moyoc, North Carolina, where they offered firing ranges, obstacle courses, 
workout rooms, and a driving track. This was rebranded from the Blackwater Lodge and Training Center to just U.S. Training Center, Greystone LTD. Greystone Limited is a division of Blackwater USA formed to market Blackwater's services to governments and other outside entities outside of the United States. Its website described it as an international supplier of turnkey security solutions. Greystone focuses on providing stability to locations experiencing turmoil, whether caused by armed conflict, epidemics, or natural or man-made disasters. Greystone has the ability to quickly and efficiently deploy anywhere in the world to create a more secure environment for our customer. Greystone is part of a private security coalition called the International Peace Operations Association, alongside Triple Canopy, Dencorp, and numerous other groups. Greystone also offers aviation services and labeled Aviation Worldwide Services its sister company. In early 2005, Blackwater held an extravagant invite-only Greystone inauguration at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel in Washington, D.C. The guest list for the seven-hour event included weapons manufacturers, oil companies, and diplomats from the likes of Uzbekistan, Yemen, the Philippines, Romania, Indonesia, Tunisia, Algeria, Hungary, Poland, Croatia, Kenya, Angola, and Jordan. She's Louise, a lot of names, I got confused. Blackwater was also able to establish a branch of the company in the Philippines under the name Satellist Solution Incorporated. Oh, and they were also accused by a former manager of Greystone for defrauding the US government. But they do have this epic trailer video. Now we've talked about aviation, we talked about Blackwater's targeting systems, we talked about Blackwater's training centers, and we talked about Blackwater's foreign affairs. But if there is one subsidiary that gets dastardly close to what Blackwater is truly known for, war profiteering and military corruption, it's Paravid. Today's hearing, however, will examine contract activities which fell far short of our requirements. In the fall of 2008, a company called Paravant entered into a subcontract with Raytheon to perform weapons training for the Afghan National Army. I emphasize the word weapons training. I'm going to use the names Blackwater and Paravant interchangeably as there is no meaningful distinction between the two. Paravent is what the American government has called a shell company. Now, a shell or front company is a company used often to hide assets, resources, and operations that may or may not be deemed illegal. It has the added benefit of separating the brand of the shell from that of the main body of the corporation, allowing a company previously blackwater in the industry to continue working. This is the case with Blackwater and by extension, Paravent. Now, unlike its predecessor, which operated primarily in Iraq, Paravent conducted work in Afghanistan. 
there was a defense contract called the Warfighters Focus Contract, which is a contract for training services used to train the Afghan National Army. It was awarded on June 6, 2007 to a team of contractors known as the Warrior Training Alliance, led by RTSC, the prime contractor. RTSC, which stands for Raytheon Technical Services Company, was awarded this contract totaling up to $11.2 billion over the course of 10 years. The contract stipulated that RTSC would train the Afghan National Army for that period of time. However, instead of directly providing that training, Raytheon decided to subcontract this contract out to a third party, that being Paravan. Now, this was something that the Program Executive Office of the United States Army knew when they gave this contract out to Raytheon. As a representative of that army said in a committee hearing, when we awarded the contract, we were aware that Raytheon was going to subcontract this work to Paravan. In the beginning of this contract, um, and, from, and I know you managed this contract from Florida, in the beginning of this contract, was it clear to the military that Raytheon was going to subcontract this work to Blackwater? And was it clear that they were then going to try to use what they called independent contractors to actually be the people on the ground doing the work? No, it was not clear at the initiation of this requirement that Raytheon was going to subcontract it to any particular subcontractor. Uh, they selected Paravan through a competitive subcontracting process that was used by Raytheon's uh, purchasing system. Did you know were they that they were allowed to subcontract Raytheon? Correct. Was there any thought of maybe including in the scope of the contract that certain requirements as it related to subcontracting? I mean, did you, so you knew that Raytheon wasn't going to do this work when you left the contract? that Raytheon was going to be a pass-through? When we awarded the contract, we were aware that Raytheon was going to subcontract this work to Paravan. What do you think black people have? What a fucking liar, dude. What a fucking Weasley little liar, dude. What a fucking Weasley little liar, dude. Holy shit, dude. Excuse me. Holy fucking shit, control. dude. I apologize for that. Literally lying. Still lying to his audience. Raytheon was just going to operate as the middleman. And that would make sense if they knew that Paravent was Blackwater all along. Of course, the representative straight up denies that there was any indication that Paravent was actually Blackwater in disguise. Proposal. We've reviewed it uh, for, we've reviewed the proposal as it was existing. There, there seemed to be no problems with it at all. So it didn't raise any flags to you that this was really Blackwater light? There was no indication that they were part of Blackwater. Zero indication from Zero your perspective? Zero indication. Uh, what was proposed were a series of labor categories within the, the basic contract, within the basic warfighter focus contract. Mm -hmm. uh, there were no names associated with those labor categories at the time of award. The training work. Have they done other training work? There, there was other training work. Uh, they had a past performance uh, volume in the subcontract proposal that, that we looked at. They did other training work for the, the Department of Defense and uh, Department of State, I believe, and for the Navy. And was that work that they did, or was it actually work that Blackwater had done, that they now claim as their credibility the, or their the, credit? The indication was that it was Paravan's, Paravan's work. Can you do, can you define what, what do you mean by indication? Did you do did you did you connect with those folks who had done that work, in the sense of those folks they contracted with, and check in with them and say who was who were these people that did this work? Did you do any of that? We didn't call those references. You didn't call any of those references. Those responsibilities of Raytheon. Mr. Gray, in a second, I guess. Uh, did you just say that you weren't aware of the fact that uh, Paravent and Blackwater were one of the same, one and the same? That is correct. Well, Paravent had never done anything. They, they never had performed any training or any other function. Were you aware of that? No, I wasn't. Well, they represented that they had in their proposal that they have 2,000 personnel deployed overseas. They didn't have anybody deployed overseas. Were you aware of that? I wasn't aware of that. Do we check those things out? Uh, Do we ask for references? Do we? I mean, they make representations here which are wildly false. It's Blackwater. It's just the shell. It's just the name changed, Mr. 
McCracken knew, and everybody knew in the field, that was Blackwater trying to get rid of a, a name which was a negative name. But you were not aware of that? No, sir. This is, however, immediately disproven by retired Colonel Bradley Wakefield, where he says this. Mr. Now, Chairman, may I? Uh, one of the, uh, the biographical summaries was that of the founder of Blackwater. Uh, I did not know the names of the companies that had, had provided offers, uh, but knew that with his curriculum or with his biographical summary, I assumed that that was an offer from Blackwater. And that it turned out that that was the Paravan offer. Uh, as it turned out to be the Paravan and, offer. And there, as we say, everyone knew they were one and the same anyway. So Correct. You may not, it may have been redacted, but you, you were aware of the fact that that was a Blackwater offer. Correct. Effect. But what is this hearing about? What did Paravan actually do? As it turns out, while Paravan was supposedly only supposed to be providing training, a Paravan employee checks out 500 AK-47s from a bunker designed to hold weapons for the Afghan National Army, signing them out under the name Eric Cartman from South Park. Many of the rifles were just never returned, disappearing into thin air basically. And just two days after Paravan stole these weapons, one of its contractors was shot in the head by another contractor after his AK-47 was accidentally discharged. The incident was described as such. A Paravent contractor, armed with the weapons that they just stole, was riding in the back of a military vehicle, quote, like a stagecoach. When that vehicle suddenly hit a bump, the weapon discharged, hitting another contractor in the head. The chairman of the committee, Senator Levin, had this to say. The reckless disregard for weapon safety is particularly striking, given that Paravant was hired to teach the Afghan National Army how to safely use their weapons. At the time of the shooting, the men were not engaged in anything relating to training for which they were hired. And in true Blackwater fashion, this is not the only incident of this happening. Just a few short months later, two Blackwater guards would, while operating an unauthorized convoy in Kabul, shoot at unarmed Afghan civilians and end up killing an Afghan national. The Justice Department released a statement saying this. The evidence at trial established that the lead vehicle in the convoy crashed and was overturned on the side of the road. Cannon and Drotliff fired multiple shots into the back of a civilian car that had attempted to pass the accident scene. The passenger of the car was fatally shot and the driver was seriously injured. An individual who happened to be walking his dog in the area was also killed in the shooting. The jury found the defendant guilty of the involuntary manslaughter for the death of the Afghan national. They were acquitted of the charges relating to the death of the person walking their dog and injuries to the driver. So basically what they are saying here is that killing civilians means nothing. Job, means absolutely nothing. They were only charged with killing the Afghan national. Justin Cannon was sentenced to 30 months, while Christopher Drotleff was sentenced to 37 months. And that is already crazy enough. But it gets even crazier when you realize that these men shouldn't even be there in the first place. And not even in the America shouldn't be involved in foreign conflicts kind of way, which is true, but not in that sort of way. But in the these two people should not have been around any sort of weapon sort of way. The first, Chris Drotleff was hired despite his military record including assault and subordinate conduct, absence without leave, that's AWOL for the uninitiated folks, failure to obey an order, larceny, and wrongful appropriation. And his criminal record following his discharge from the army included convictions for reckless driving. I wonder how that convoy crashed, by the way. Disturbing the peace, assault and battery, driving while, inco oh, driving while intoxicated. Again, I wonder how that convoy crashed resisting arrest and trespassing. Now, Justin Cannon's record is a bit less serious, but a whole lot more fun. He was also discharged from the army after he went AWOL, as well as testing positive for cocaine. Just, 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 a, little, just a little party man, you know what I mean? This, this whole, thing, the whole thing feels very, very crooked, you know? You know? So if the military knew that Paravent was Blackwater, and Raytheon knew that Paravent was Blackwater, heck, even Paravent contractors thought they were Blackwater. Their checks were signed by Blackwater. Let me ask um, Mr. Walker and Mr. McCracken, during this period of time, whose name was on your paycheck? Uh, Blackwater's name was on the paycheck, ma'am. And Mr. Walker, whose name was on your paycheck? Direct deposit. Never saw it. So you never saw it. Who did you think you were working for? Blackwater. 
So why was Paravant contracted? Well, as we come to find out, it was actually Raytheon that told Z Services to change their name if they wanted the contract. Well, that's, that's part of the problem here. Are there other cover corporations besides Paravan out there that are where, where you're putting a name on something so that people like the previous witness that was looking at these contracts? I mean, he said in the hearing today that he had no idea that Paravent was Blackwater, but yet the people that were working for you in the theater said, well, yeah, we work for Blackwater. Everybody knew we worked for Blackwater. Our paycheck came from Blackwater. We were Blackwater. Blackwater, 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 Blackwater. Um, Paravent just appears to be a classic example of a cover corporation in order for the people who were doing the contract not to know who they were really contracting with. Senator, that's a very good question. And I think that there's... As you discussed earlier, I believe there was multiple layers of Raytheon and then the government. Raytheon, my understanding, requested that a company name be other than Blackwater. It was at Raytheon's request. Okay. So now we're getting to the meat of the matter. You're saying on the record that Raytheon requested that Blackwater make up a name for a company so they could enter into a contract with Raytheon. I'm saying, Senator, that my understanding is that request for a company other than Blackwater did come from Raytheon. And this is directly facilitated by our American military. So to recap this whole crazy mess, a company, Blackwater, commits war crimes in Iraq. They change their name, create shell companies and new subsidiaries to obfuscate, continue to get millions of dollars worth of government contracts all while Prince is still on the board at this current moment. Blackwater then continues to commit more war crimes under their new name and the cycle repeats. Do I, got, do I have that correct? Am I mistaken on that fact? But yes, if you were keeping track of the timeline, we're only in 2009. There's still like 11, 12, 13 more years of content to go through. So strap in. Let's just keep this train running. Sorry, my camera's freaking auto-focusing. Can I turn that off, actually? I can. No more auto-focus. <laughs> okay. Now let's talk about international development solutions. Into the 2008 presidential race, Clinton versus Obama. Now, during this schism, schism? Is schism the right word I want to use here? Split or division? Yeah. Okay. Now, during this schism, the hot topic of private military companies arose. Obama landed on the side of Eric Prince and his campaign said that he would refuse any legislation to ban them, them being Blackwater or private military companies in general. And in response to that, Hillary Clinton said that she was for banning them, trying to, to garner the more left wing vote. And even though she didn't win, she became the Secretary of State the perfect position to institute any policy to ban or even mitigate the use of PMCs. Like even just blacklisting Blackwater and its subsidiaries would have been a start, a step in the right direction. But of course that didn't happen. But what did happen is the State Department themselves putting up a five-year contract with up to $10 billion split amongst six companies. This is almost five times the previous Worldwide Protective Services contract that they had only put up four years prior. One that was awarded to Blackwater, Dencorp, and Triple Canopy. These names started to come up a lot. Hmm, maybe it's leading me somewhere. Anyway, when asked about Blackwater's ability to rebid on the contract again, a State Department official said this, any company, including Z Services, may submit a proposal in response to an acquisition process established on the basis of full and open competition. And at first, it didn't seem like Blackwater, Z Services, or any of its known subsidiaries showed up on the contract solicitation list. Even the State Department confirmed that Z Services did not submit its own bid. So that should be it, right? Blackwater didn't get the contract. Win, dub. We, 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 we take those. We take those. We take those. You know what I mean? Right? As it turns out, International Development Solutions LLC, which was a company that actually won the contract, is a subsidiary of Blackwater. <laughs> and it's the parent company to the US Training Center. Hey, we just talked about that a little bit ago. Remember? 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 
that, that's that's so surprising. Who could have who could have seen that coming? Not not I, not I. And while the State Department is required to do an in-depth review to ensure that companies meet minimum requirements, meaning that they're not barred or suspended, because Blackwater was never barred or suspended after the Nice Square massacre, or after the pair event fiasco, or after you know Blackwater Select was strapping bombs to drones. We'll get to there in a second. Um, they are allowed to still have the contract. So, yeah, commit war crimes two separate times within two years under two different companies' names, and you're still allowed to, to get a multi-billion dollar contract. There are a lot of, there's, there's, there's a lot of these subsidiaries. And we're going to need to hit a, hit a rapid fire mode if we're going to try to get through this on time. Blackwater Select. Blackwater Select was used by the CIA to strap bombs to drones. I know, crazy first sentence, but it's true. They were used to strap bombs to drones, assemble them, and loading Hellfire missiles. Now, of course, they screwed up that as well, as there was an instance where 500 pounds of literal bombs, unexploded explosives, fell off of the Predator drone before it hit its target, leading to a frantic search for the unexploded drone on the border of Afghanistan and Pakistan. These people just can't seem to do anything right. Backup Training LLC. Backup Training LLC was a company Blackwater bought to produce its training materials, CDs, online coursework, etc. U.S. Training Center Incorporated. We talked briefly about this one, but Blackwater Lodge and Training Center turned into U.S. Training Center. They have two subsidiaries, one being Blackwater West and Blackwater Security Consulting. Blackwater West dealing with its West Coast branches of Blackwater Training, that sort of thing, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later as well. And Security Consulting, the name is self-explanatory. Blackwater Pro Shop LLC. Blackwater Pro Shop LLC is the company's, it's the company Blackwater uses for its retail shop for Blackwater's merchandise. Apex Management LLC. Provides management services to Samaris owned companies. I'm not sure what that means to be honest. EP Aviation, yet another e aviation company that Blackwater owns. Uh, they own and lease aircrafts. Uh, Pelagian, Pelagian? Maritime LLC, I don't know. A maritime company that owns the MacArthur ship. Raven Development Group, LLC. Provides construction and facility maintenance. Uh, it's their, their real, realtor arm, realtor development arm. Samaris Co. Oh, this is Samaris, okay. Samaris is a foreign holding company. It's also the parent company to Greystone Limited, Greystone SRL, Salamis Aviation, and Al Zulama Company. I hope I pronounced those correctly. BWT Services, LLC. I assume it's the for Blackwater Travel Services supports all travel for Z and its subsidiaries. ENJ Holdings slash ENJ Leasing. They are real estate holding and real estate leasing companies. Very simple, very succinct. I like this, Sean. Do, do more of that. No more paragraphs, please. XPG LLC. XPG is a security service that provides classified services. No idea what that means. This is different than Blackwater Select, which did classified CIA stuff, but like, you know, yeah. So now that we've fully covered Z services, which I would like to remind you, had only existed for a single year, only existed for 2009. We can now move on to talk briefly, briefly about Academy. So even after the whole switcheroo shell company swap method Z services used and the whole thing with Paravant, they were unable to shake off the stink of the Blackwater brand. So in 2010, Eric Prince sold all of his American corporations and moved his entire family to Abu Dhabi. And you may be wondering, what business does this American man have in Abu Dhabi? And we will get to that later. First, we have to talk about the legacy he left behind. According to records, Prince sold his companies to a group of investors in 2010. And if these investors are to be believed, they have zero ties with Blackwater, zero ties with Z Services, and zero ties with Prince. However, they are not to be believed because as it turns out, Z Services was sold to the investment team led by Forte Capital Advisors and Manhattan Growth Partners for an estimated $200 million. So, so boom, new company, new management ultimately. Well, as it turns out, Forte's owner, Jason DeYonker, is a close confidant to the Prince family founder of Blackwater, Eric Prince. So Prince sold his company off to his buddy and effed off to Abu Dhabi while the new management swore up and down that they were different. But 
they didn't change a single bit. Got right back into the defense industry, even after, again, as Eric Prince had said in 2008, they were done with defense. And after stating that on July 21st, 2008, Blackwater Worldwide would shift its resources away from security contracting, Blackwater rebranded again. But it's not 2007 anymore. Most people aren't paying as much attention to foreign affairs, to foreign conflicts as they used to. So all Academy had to do was change their name a couple more times, keep their heads down and collect on the incoming contracts. So that is exactly what they did. And now with that new leadership, they can realistically call themselves a completely different company, even while utilizing the same facilities, the same contractors, the same procedures, and even the exact same website. Even on documentation, they continue to use staff with old Z services and Blackwater email extensions. But by golly gee, it worked. Academy was awarded with hundreds of millions of dollars of government contracts. Now, that's not to say that, I mean, we, we know Z services, even with everybody knowing that it was Blackwater, still got those kind of contracts, but it's still pretty crazy that, you know, change your brand a little bit more and you get the money flowing back in. And that lasted until when Constella's Holding, a group established by investors who formed Academy, interesting enough, and guess who? Triple Canopy founders. <laughs> what, what a surprise, they came back. They were very, very, very closely tied with Blackwater. And now their founders, along with the people who now own Academy, got together. They merged and began operating as Constellis in 2014. We then continued to increase funding to this group to the tune of $5 billion over the last 10 years. All while Triple Canopy and Academy both continued to receive separate government contracts as well. Triple Canopy had very recently won $30 million contract with the Department of Homeland Security secured this year, and Constellis earned $1.3 billion of contract in 2021. So to recap, the same people who committed war crimes in 2007, committed more war crimes in 2009, are getting billions of dollars worth of government contracts in 2021 and 2022. We're still funding war criminals to this day, but that is not surprising in the least. Now, before we end this video, right, before we end this video off, I think it's important to finally touch on Eric Prince. Now, as I stated sometime earlier, after Eric Prince sold Z services to his buddy, his friend, his pal, he moved his entire family to Abu Dhabi. Here he was hired by the Crown Prince in order to assemble an 800 member group of foreign troops for the UAE. He founded a company called Reflexive Responses, but made sure that his name stayed off of any official documents. No, not suspicious at all, right? Pretty sure it's on the up and up. And during his tenure as the shadow leader of this company, money seemed to be disappearing from the books. Who, who knows what was happening? Who can have any idea? This continued until 2011, where he was training 2,000 Somalis in anti-piracy efforts. But a spokesperson for the Prince Group was very hush-hush about Prince's actual role in the training efforts. Prince also established a private equity firm called the Frontier Resource Group and served as the chairman of the Frontier Group Services Limited, which was backed by the China International Trust Investment Corporation a group that supported China's investments in African nations. None of this is extraordinarily relevant outside of the fact that it shows Eric Prince's mentality. It shows where his mind lies. As long as somebody is paying him, he's gonna go there. He gonna go where the money is, right? And this is no more prevalent than his dealings with Russia. According to an Intercept article, after Eric helped to deal with a Somali pirate issue the Prince of Abu Dhabi had, he owed him a favor now. That favor manifested in a meeting with Kirill Dmitriev, CEO of an $8 billion Russian sovereign wealth fund and an associate of Vladimir Putin. Now, being a prominent supporter of Trump and a close associate of Steve Bannon, one could see how in this, you know, era being after the 2016 election, you can see how, how this might have looked to the American people, right? Therefore, he was called to testify in front of Congress. However, even after testifying, nothing really came from it. Nothing happened. It's just, it's just something that just happened. He, he showed up on stand. He was like, we, it was just a meeting. Shrug. 
The Intercept article sums up Eric pretty well when it says this. Although he continues to dream of deploying his military services in the world's failed states and persists in hawking a crackpot scheme of privatizing the US war in Afghanistan, Prince has diversified his portfolio. No longer satisfied with contracting out former special forces operators to the State Department and Pentagon, Prince is now attempting to offer an entire supply chain of warfare and conflicts. He wants to be able to skim a profitable cut from each stage of a hostile operation, whether it be overt or covert, foreign or domestic. His offerings range from the traditional mercenary toolkit, military hardware and manpower, to cell phone surveillance technologies and malware, to psychological operations and social media manipulation in partnership with shattery operations like James O'Keefe's Project Veritas. It's a lot of words, bro. It's a lot of freaking words. So yeah, Prince bankrolled Veritas, providing training and intelligence and elicitation techniques from a retired military intelligence operative. An operative who ended up quitting a few weeks later stating that the Veritas group was incapable of learning. He then arranged for a former MI6 officer to provide the training. It was very clear that Eric wanted Veritas to operate as his sort of like domestic spies for whatever reason. The Intercept also reported that Prince offered his services as a subcontractor to the Russian Wagner group, supporting their activities in Mozambique and Libya. He was also being investigated by the FBI for his alleged involvement in the attempted sale in Libya despite an embargo on Libyan arms. He was ultimately not charged with any crime. All in all, he has his hands in every pie he can get his hands in and will do anything in order to make a quick buck or two, all while never really being held accountable for any of the numerous war crimes or human rights abuses that him or his companies or their subsidiaries or their fronts perpetuate. So we can finally talk about the legacy of Blackwater. In December 2020, right before Trump left office, he pardoned 15 people, four of which were the four that were convicted in 2014 for the 2007 massacre. He pardoned war criminals, just like straight up. He pardoned war criminals who killed Iraqi civilians. And y'all remember that person that Trump appointed to be his secretary of education, Betsy DeVos, and how she had like no qualifications? Well, her real name is Elizabeth D. DeVos, and her maiden name is Elizabeth D. Prince. Hmm. I'm sure there's no relation to Eric Prince, former CEO of Blackwater and Sea Services. I'm sure they're not siblings. No, both children of the billionaire industrialist Edgar Prince. But that's not really the point. But yes, I know that this story is very confusing. So, so, I made a board. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good board. It's an idea that I had, and I don't really know where to put it in the video, so I'm gonna put it right here. This is me speaking on the board, doing a recap of everything that we talked about so far, just so you can see how convoluted it is. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna cut this here. And just to recap, to make sure that you've really gotten it, Eric Prince, 1996, started Blackwater USA. Blackwater USA has a bunch of subsidiary companies. From 2006 to 2008, they have grown, they have expanded, they've taken millions of dollars in government contracts, working in Iraq and Afghanistan. Blackwater owns Blackwater Airships, Blackwater Target Systems, Blackwater Worldwide, Blackwater Lodge and Training Center, Blackwater Pro Shop, Blackwater Security Consulting, Backup Training, Blackwater Select, Blackwater West, and B. WT services. These are all the subsidiaries with the Blackwater name specifically. And so in 2007, Blackwater and the four Blackwater guards had shot upon and killed 17 people in Iraq, 14 of them being civilians and wounding 20 more. And after the event has happened, the State Department, including Paul Bremer, who also was protected and also had close relations with Blackwater and other security contractors, made a law or a policy that private military contractors, these people, were not beholden to the laws from the countries in which they were operating in. So the four Blackwater guards who committed war crimes on Iraq soil could not be tried by the Iraqi court system and thus had to be tried by the American court system, the American justice system. And that works out perfectly because it's also very interesting because the same State Department 
after the, the war crimes that were just committed went and tried to gather up shell casings in order to protect Blackwater. Totally impartial, by the way. And so when that happened, Blackwater's name got a little bit dirty, got a little tainted. So they started to switch it up. They're like, oh, in 2009, we're like, we're no longer Blackwater. We're these services. And we're gonna shift our focus away from military contracting, from, from the security industry, right? Turn into Z services. And as a consequence of that, we saw Blackwater airships turn into Guardian flight systems. We saw Blackwater targeting systems turn into GDS manufacturing. We saw Aviation Worldwide, which was a service under Blackwater, expand and now encompass Presidential Airways, STI Aviation, AirQuest Incorporated, and Guardian Flight Systems. The interesting part is that this sector right here has also been involved with some controversy, involved in a, um, in a lawsuit, a wrongful death lawsuit by the families of three contractors, soldiers, I don't remember, three soldiers after a plane had crashed citing negligence, settled for an undisclosed fee. We also saw that Blackwater Lodge and Training Center turned into the U.S. Training yeah. Center, which existed under Z Services as well. What else? Oh yeah, Blackwater Select didn't turn into the CIA, no, no. but they've always been in close contact with the CIA. The CIA would contract Blackwater Select to do confidential missions, which actually coincidentally is the same thing that XPG was doing as well. So that's interesting. That's that's interesting. I didn't even put that connection up there, but who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But then you have Greystone, the international division of Z Services, because Greystone had a, a luncheon, had a inauguration for its company, which is of course under Z Services, where they invited the like officials, the nationals, the ambassadors for a bunch of different countries around the globe. And they, they're like, hey, 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 we could do this thing for you. So after this man had committed war crimes and his name got a little dirty, now he's trying to expand it to other countries. And we'll see that come up later as well. But you have that happening, and they actually were able to establish a branch in another country in the Philippines with Satellite Solution Incorporated. And then on this side of the screen, you know, right here, right here, right here, you have more of these services. You have another aviation system, which is not under Aviation Worldwide Services, but under EP Aviation. Um, you have Apex Management Solutions. You have Raven Development Group, which also develops U.S. Training Center and other training centers, or try to, around the country. The private security company Blackwater USA is being accused of trying to secretly build a military training facility in San Diego, right here, just blocks from the U.S.-Mexican border. Blackwater received approval for the uh, 61,000 square foot indoor facility in Ote Mesa, California, by filing for permits using the names of two subsidiaries. Um, but one in San, Di San Diego was actually processed and was able to be stopped. Interesting. Um, but the craziest part is Paravance, which is under Z Services, was subcontracted out by Raytheon after Raytheon had gotten a, a, a military contract from Guess who? The State Department. Again, of course, they show up a lot in here, actually. Weird, really enough. Um, but yeah, the State Department had a contract that they had they had given out to Blackwater, Dencorp, and Triple Canopy uh, four years prior, I believe in 2006, uh, 2005, 2006. But they're like, it's coming up, it's a five-year contract for billions of dollars. They were like, we're gonna re-up this. Now we're gonna have more people come in. And so, they were, they were holding that contract, they were seeing who we're gonna give the contract to, and they were gonna give it to Raytheon. Now, according to, to Raytheon, and according to Paravent, and according to Z Services, Raytheon knew that they were gonna contract out to Paravent when they got the contract. And Raytheon said that the State Department knew. And Z Services and Paravent said that everybody knew that Paravent was Z Services. There was no, there was no, like it wasn't up in the air. You know what I mean? This was, this was, this was a known fact in the industry. In fact, interesting enough that Z Services said that the person who told them to change their name to Paravent was Raytheon. So the way that it happened was that the State Department was like, we have this contract. 
and we're gonna give it out. And like Raytheon, boom, you've won this contract. Raytheon was like, okay, give me this contract. I'm going to sub, sub, like, subcontract out this other company, Z Services. And then State Department was like, cool, that's okay with me. Raytheon then turns around, looks at Z Services, like, look, we're gonna subcontract this contract out, but your name is kind of dirty right now because of a whole Blackwater stuff, right? Kind of crazy. So I'm gonna need you to change your name and then I'm gonna give you this contract. And Z Services is like, okay, boom, created Paraban to provide training services to I to the African National Army. And they're like, Raytheon was like, boom, okay, boom, you have this contract. And they're only supposed to be providing training services for the African National Army. But it comes interesting enough is because a couple months down the line, where Paraban is supposed to be providing training services, they went into a bunker, Bunker 22, with all the weapons that was supposed to be for the Afghan army. They're like, give me 500 weapons. Right. And then the person sitting down at the desk was like, okay, you have a name? Eric Cartman, you know, the character from South Park. And so they gave them the 500 weapons, Paravent effed off with the 500 weapons and just like never brought them back. And it's hilarious because two days later, there was an incident where it came with um, the weapons that they had just stolen from the bunker. Two paravent guards were riding on the back of an army vehicle. And guess what happened? They hit a bump. The, 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 the AK-47 that they, again, had stolen from the bunker, discharged from one paravent guard and shooting another contractor in the head, paralyzing him. If only this could be, could have been avoided, you know? And that's not even the, that's not even the craziest thing that happened, right? That's only happening between the guards for paravent. That's a stupid decision. It's kind of funny, but like, that's not even the craziest thing that happened. What is the craziest thing that happened? You know, you may be asking yourself. I'm gonna tell you. These two people, just six months after that happened, weapons still have not been returned, mind you. Six months later, weapons still have not been returned. There is a unauthorized convoy being conducted with these two pair of vanguards, Justin Cannon and Chris Drotliff, right? And so you're like, what happened with them? So they're operating this unauthorized convoy. The convoy crashes. The pair of guards are looking out the back of the crashed convoy. They see a car driving away and they just fire upon a random civilian fleeing car. They shoot the driver, injure the driver. Let me know if this sounds familiar. They shoot the driver and like injuring the driver, the car keeps going. They, they, they freaking shoot and kill the passenger and they shoot and kill a civilian who's just walking his dog. And the, the, for, the, for the person who they shot, the passenger, was an Afghan national, right? Now that causes some problems. And it's crazy because these two were charged with something, but not for killing the civilian. They were only charged with killing the Afghan national. The charge for killing the civilian, the charge for injuring the driver were dropped. But I guess who? The U.S. Because then you can't be tried in the country where you commit your crimes in, thanks to the State Department. Crazy, crazy. And it's not even the craziest part because these two should not have been operating in Afghanistan in the first place. And not in the, oh, the U.S. shouldn't be there kind of way. In the, these two people shouldn't be there kind of way. You know? What do I mean? So these two, Justin Cannon and Chris Drotliff, were already they were already uh, 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 in the military, right? The U.S. Army. They were discharged from the Army because they NCAA. both went AWOL. Chris has a long rap sheet in the Army, and that's the reason why he was discharged uh, alongside the AWOL, including stuff like reckless driving, you know, reckless endangerment, that sort of stuff, like, you know, violent behavior. And Justin Cannon was discharged from the Army for, you know, that's a positive for cocaine. Kind of cool, no? <laughs> Not as bad as Chris, but you know, interesting, interesting. Um, but Chris is like, even after he got out of the army, his violent tendencies didn't stop, you know, because he had gotten out and had actually garnered a criminal record after he was discharged from the army with stuff like um, being charged with assault and battery, reckless driving, things like that, you know? It's not like, like they, they, they were marked as do not use in the Blackwater database, because remember, Z Services is still Blackwater, but the day um, that Paravent was established, the same day that Raytheon was like, hey, I'll change your name, right? The day Paravent was established, they were secretly put in and marked as 
the, they erase the do not use like, uh, selection. So yeah, bring these, bring these people in who's been discharged from the army and who have a rap sheet as well. So these are the people who are supposed to be training the Afghan uh, national army, only charged with killing the Afghan national, not civilians. That's very interesting. So of course, now you have two companies, both who have committed war crimes on two separate occasions. Sea service didn't even last a year. Established in 2009, this guy, um, what's his face, Eric Prince, he was like, all right, this is getting a little bit too crazy. Two of my companies committed war crimes. Maybe I'm not just cut out for the defense, I mean, for the security industry, right? For the defense industry. So he, he was like, I'm selling this company off a group of investors, totally separate from me. Not, not the same, not the same at all, right? Um, those group of investors was the Grand ha Manhattan Growth Project and Forte Capital Advisors, right? Come to find out, if you see this line connecting the two, Forte Capital Advisors is owned by his buddy, a family, long-standing family confidant of the Prince family, somebody he knows. And a vegan, a vegan company, you know, trying to like greenwash his brand. So they buy this, you know, this like, this securities brand, which actually seems like a war crime incorporated at this point, because look at this, right? They buy the securities brand and they turn it into academy. New name, new website, new everything, right? They're like, we're a totally different co company. We're not associated with them at all, right? Academy only lasted three years. Um, that's where US Training Center comes in. They have all these subsidiaries as well. They're still trying to expand, they're still trying to grow. Uh, still getting government contracts as well. Billions of dollars in government contracts given to a company that has, at this point, committed at least two war crimes, at least, that we know of. Not to mention the, uh, the CIA stuff, but at least two war crimes. They lasted until 2014, where they combined with, guess who? Old standing triple canopy, you know, good old reliable here, turning into Constellus. Constellus still exists right now. And they still also get billions of dollars in US contracts, because it's not like you have like, a company that's committed two war crimes combining with other companies that I'm sure has also committed war crimes, turning into a huge defense war crime incorporated and still get government funding. And Prince, he was like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna back off from American defense industry. He takes his, and he uproots his entire family's life, moves them to Abu Dhabi, gets real close with the Prince of Abu Dhabi, creates um, the Frontier a Services Group, which is backed by a the Siddiq? I'm gonna call it SIG because I don't remember what the, the uh, acronym stands for. It's a Chinese corporation. So he got his hand in China. He's got his hands in the UAE with Abu Dhabi. You have the Prince Group who has these three things still operating in America. You have him meeting or creating respective responses, which is supposed to be a anti-piracy group as well in Somalia. He also has hands in African aviation. He's met with Kirill uh, Dmitriev, who is a high level Russian official who has ties with Vladimir Putin. This has actually got him in some hot, hot water, actually. He had to testify in front of Congress for this one. He has ties with the Russian Wagner group, you know. Um, what else do we have on this board? I think that covers pretty much all of it. And yeah, really insane story. Blackwater still operating, still maintaining money today uh, through Constellis. They're, they're, they're the, same, the same company. Like the Academy's training center and stuff like that, which still exists under Constellus, still exist. They're using the Blackwater's name in some of their like official documents. Like some people still have like Blackwater emails. Academy and Sea Surface websites look identical. Like it's, they're, they're still they're the same company fun functioning and we're still giving them money. And I had just found out like a couple of days before I'm recording this, that the American government passed a, 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 a the highest, the highest military budget that we have seen ever. It's it's ever increasing. I said I said 800 million at the beginning of this video. It's 800 like 23 million now. Zero war still. This is where the majority of our money is going. So fun. Love that. This took a lot of research. I'm going to go sit down somewhere. Welcome back from the board. I'm sure it wasn't a very long and redundant process, but I, I've spent too much time on it. Anyway, so what does this mean? We've seen the board. We've seen all the red connecting lines, connecting the players 
to the gang. But what does it mean? Well, it means that no matter what you do, no matter who you hurt, and no matter what war crimes you commit, if you have enough power, money, or status, you can escape accountability. Blackwater tarnished its reputation in 2007, so far that even companies in that same dirty business of mercenary contracting didn't want anything to do with them. So what did they do? They rebranded, they expanded, and not only did pretty much everyone involved escape accountability, the facilitators behind those actions were rewarded with billions of dollars when they either sold their companies off to somebody who could actually handle the baggage or left the country to pursue those same exact endeavors under foreign law. And for the very, very few who faced any sort of retribution for their action, the four Blackwater guards who were tried on trial, even then, even then they weren't held accountable because just a few short years after they were sentenced, after they were convicted for murdering civilians, they were pardoned by Donald Trump. And the pair of guards weren't even charged with killing civilians at all. The deaths of those civilians didn't even matter in the eyes of American law. And they couldn't be charged in the foreign law because of a certain Paul Bremer we know. But the worst part, to me at least, is that billions of dollars of our taxpayer money is currently and consistently being siphoned, stolen even, by these private corporations to the detriment of everyone involved except for them. We were giving Constellus $1.3 billion a year to do what we were already spending $700, $800, $820 billion a year doing. We spend more on our military, I must reiterate, than the next nine countries do combined. And we have decided to continuously fund private corporations who have committed war crimes. This is a choice that we've made. And we don't even have health care. No national health care system. No free college. No high-speed rail. This also isn't a left or right issue. Both major political parties support this system. Obama, even during the 2008 campaign, was pro-PMCs. Even stating that he would fight for more transparency after being elected, he didn't even do that. Didn't even do that. And I implore you to look up the 2022 military budget that passed the House and the Senate, giving more than $800 billion a year to the military. And I actually wrote this script before it happened again. They just passed an increase in military spending, past $800 billion a year, just past that. And I implore you to look up your representative and look up the voting history for these bills. I guarantee you're gonna see a lot of purple, a lot of purple. And that's why I believe that nothing is going to change. Not, not with this, at least. The Democrats and the Republicans both operate to further American imperialism. The Dems will say they wanna fund social programs, but will then give all the money for these social programs to the military, again, not being involved in any wars right now, currently but will then turn around and spit in the face of actual progressives claiming that we don't have the funds for universal health care. We can't cancel all of student debt because we don't have the funds to. Where's the money gonna come from? How will we pay for it? We can't house the unhoused. We can't build houses. We can't offer a path to citizenship. How are we gonna pay for it? So if there's one thing I want you to take with you after you've seen this video, after you've seen the, the entire crazy tangled mess of Blackwater and Eric Prince and the stuff that they do and the stuff that they get away with and the people who we give the money to. Remember that next time they say that you don't deserve to have free college. Thank you for watching this video. Um, this was a long time coming, especially with like with like finals and stuff trying to do all this research and the story just kept growing this was not even a video originally about blackwater it was supposed to be about a tv show that talked about real world issues very well now i was going to do like a, a a non not very in-depth video about why this show was great and why it's my favorite show couldn't even do that because i started researching about one of the the, the episodes 
brought me to Blackwater. I started researching Blackwater. It took me down this huge rabbit hole. And I'm just like, all right, cool. Um, but yeah, thank you to my patrons. I can say that now because I have patrons. Mango B, Gut, Tiffany Wright, Alice C, and Gorvia2000. Gorvia is my tier two patron. Um, and so, yeah. I don't, I don't have much to say. Thank you for watching. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. There's a lot of freaking reading. Catch you on the flip side, baby. Ooh, ah, ooh, kill him. Ooh, kill him. Kill him. Ooh, ah, ooh, kill him. Ooh, kill him. Kill him. Whoa.